So they would yeah. take your child, go to a hut somewhere, and they would kill the child. They would eat the child. I, you know, I saw two spirits coming very quickly. I can't even explain it. It's speed of light. They're coming towards my face. The scar of human beings. And these skulls were on fire. And and they come close to my face here. And they are, they are screaming at the loudest. I've never heard anything that loud. I can't explain it, but I saw this side of my hand. And on this side of my hand, fire came out. I did not say yeah. anything. I did not say any word. I did not pray. Yeah. Fire literally came out and consumed those two spirits. And they screamed Yo. and they just, boom, they left the room. Dumelang, hello and welcome to another exciting episode of I Have Been Through the Most Podcast right here on YouTube with myself, Innocent, and of course, Millicent Marshile. We're excited to bring you yet another exciting, riveting, I don't want to say scary, but I want to say put on your seatbelt, it's going to be a good one. You said exciting twice, so that's a good thing. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I mean, we get millions of views, but we don't have millions of subscribers. So don't forget to click that magic button. It's absolutely free. And also make sure you like and comment down below. The interactions means the world to us because Innocent specifically loves the, the comment, comment section. section. Yes. <laughs> and Millicent specifically likes your other digital platforms. Millicent, where can they listen? Yeah. Yes, you can listen to us on Spotify as well as Apple Podcasts. Make sure you follow us on those platforms. Listen to us on those platforms. We're trying to grow our numbers there, by the way. Um, and if there's something that we haven't mentioned before, is that last year in 2023, yes. um, we were one of, I think, the top 10 uh, breakout stars on Spotify. So hmm. thank you, guys. But we can definitely grow even much bigger. The show is not about us. Let's get straight to it. We have Pastor Judge joining us today. Super excited because, you know what, Sne? Si pete inta yaze to show in today, you know? Our um, WhatsApp group. Our WhatsApp group is here today. You know? The uh, elders. The elders are here today. Uh, are you uh, an entire elder? An entire elder. Stop. Uh, listen, stop being in denial. Pastor <laughs> Judge, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so, so, so much, Santuins. And uh, you know what? It's, uh, it's really a privilege. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be on your platform. Yeah. I follow you guys. I love you guys. And oh. I think your, your ministry is, is very important for the for the body of Christ. Yeah. Come on. That's power yeah. right there. Pastor Judge, please introduce yourself to our audience. Tell them who you are. You know, you've, we've already had a conversation off camera. Yeah. And um, wow, you've done so much. And we're thrilled to have you today. Introductions. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, Pastor Judge, uh, born Mashuleli Matia. I am, uh, what you'd like to call a young pastor, if, if I could yeah. call it that. But as you said, Not obviously so with, the same, <laughs> with the same WhatsApp group. <laughs> Not so young anymore. Yeah. But uh, uh, I think just in a nutshell, I just uh, got ordained at a very young age. Uh, I was uh, about 27. So I've been a pastor for about nine years. Mm. I've been married for the same amount of time as well. Sure. But uh, I got saved uh, around 2021. 20, so I got mm. saved uh, in uh, 2009. And uh, uh, that was just a little after I'd met uh, my wife then, who was my, um, you know, childhood uh, sweetheart, if I could call her, because wow. she had matriculated in 2008, and then yeah. we sort of met in 2008. And then a year later, um, that is when I got uh, sort of saved afterwards, yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. And I know that, you know, that's a very beautiful journey, and congratulations on that. Yeah. Take us through your story. I represent, uh, so, so my, my thinking is this, um, Whenever somebody has an encounter, right, there, there's mm -hmm. always a reason behind it. And that's just my, my own theory. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, I think it, it more ties to the purpose that uh, God has uh, sort of uh, ordained for you. And uh, um, that being said, uh, I know that a lot of times when you talk about en encounters and, and all these things, people always think about ministry or the pulpit ministry or, or you know, just the, the, you know, it's, it's always in line with ministry. But ministry in itself, in all fairness, is broader than uh, just, uh, you know, standing behind the pulpit. But anyway, um, let's just uh, get to uh, maybe the beginning of my, my own encounters. Mm -hmm. So just uh, like uh, most of, uh, you know, the, the young people out there, I uh, matriculated uh, 2007. Uh, didn't seem like I was getting right uh, with, with life. Uh, I remember really uh, that I couldn't really hold down a job, you know. Um, and I was doing very odd, small, you know, peace jobs. I would work at a restaurant here, there, and, and there was nothing really that was coming right because... Um, I think I was a drunkard, if I, if, for a lack of a better word, right? And 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 maybe just as well, just to chip in there, my dad used to drink quite a lot, 
And and that being said, that is something that maybe you might touch on at a little, uh, you know, later stage. The fact that uh, it, it matters, your foundation matters, right? Mm. Where you come from and, mm. and, and how maybe your parents have sort of experienced life. All that has a bearing on your own experience. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm there in uh, Arco and uh, my parents sort of uh, um, separated. You know, uh, my dad was never really a very, um, you know, uh, present father. He was an absent uh, man uh, and, uh, you know, God bless his soul to us. The end of his life, I think we, we sort of, you know, uh, reconciled with quite a nice relationship before okay. he, just a little bit before he passed on. But anyway, um, um, a young man raised by a single mom um, uh, with two other brothers and uh, one young sister. And at that point in time, life was really tough for us because my mom was a teacher at a place called Creslon. She was renting a little uh, garage, uh, and if I recall now, I usually share this when I'm, I'm in church, that that garage did not even have a window, now that I think of it, because it was a car garage, right? And this is three males, um, you know, teenagers. So my brother was already in his 20s, a little bit older than us, and one young girl with one uh, lady all, all tucked in into this little space where this is our bedroom, this is our kitchen, this is our everything. We've literally just divided the sleeping area using some sort of... Um, you know, um, makeshift wardrobe of sorts, right? But uh, anyway, um, then around the same time, my mother, and, and I think she's the genesis of actually my salvation and my experiences and everything. Mm. My mother starts having, uh, you know, sort of uh, issues with ancestral spirits. Um, mm. um, and naturally, you know, we're black people. So, so once that starts happening, the, the natural place that you run to is, oh, maybe you need to be initiated. You need to become a Sangoma, et cetera. Mm. And that's, that was the, the natural sort of, you know, um, thought at the, at, the, at the moment. Then one of my aunts that was already saved, uh, I think she used to go to, and I'm sorry, I'll just maybe mention some, she used to go to Christ Embassy. Yes. I don't really like mentioning names on, on this mm, kind of yes. you know, platforms, but she used to go to Christ Embassy. She had been exposed to uh, God, you know, the spiritual, etc. So she says to my mom, listen, there is a pastor very close to where you are that might just be able to help you, right? And uh, she directs my mom to a place that was in, in Plain Road in Spartan. My mom goes there, and um, as God would have it, uh, she sort of gets delivered. She, she has, you know, that uh, encounter with the man of God. is praying for her. She's flying all over the shore and, you know, rolling on the ground, etc. And uh, she comes back the next week, and when she gets home, she says to me, like, listen, we need to go to church. There's something that uh, happened to me. You know, I go to church, they pray for me, and this is what mm -hmm. happened. Then the first thing that I asked her, I said, what kind of a church is this? Mm -hmm. And then she said, no, no, this uh, Pentecostal church. I said, mm -hmm. is the pastor Nigerian? She said, yes. I said, no, <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not doing that because remember our mindset is, and, and, and unfortunately because we've seen a lot, you know, yes. even you know, as, as people, yes. we've seen a lot, we've seen a lot. And I'm thinking, you no, know, uh, all those Nigerians, all those people that come and just do all sorts of things, that is my mindset. But anyway, I did not know that that was literally the season that God was now reeling me in as well. Mm. So I leave and I go. There was a place, a house that I used to go and drink uh, in the neighborhood. Ah. <laughs> so I go there and I'm chilling. And it's midweek because now I'm just the son that is not getting anywhere. Nothing is, is literally yes. coming together for me. I'm just really a problem. You know, I'm always fighting. I'm always drinking. I'm always just, I'm a problem uh, to my mom and to mm. obviously the community. But anyway, I go to the south and I sit there and I remember I bought uh, a quad. I used to drink black. I used to love black for the life of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I buy this quad of black label and I'm sitting and, and I open this quad. And remember, I'm a heavy drinker. I used to drink a lot, man. Mm. I used to drink and I used to party a lot. Uh, Uville, Hillbro, these were my places. I would leave Camdenburg just to come over here and drink. Mm. So I'm um, sitting there and I'm trying to drink this beer as God leaves. I don't think I took up to three uh, sips. And every time I would take a drink, a gulp, I, I can't even explain it. It seems as if it would not go past my, my throat, which was a little mm. strange, right? And um, the more I try to force it, I'm sure maybe by the fourth time, like literally this beer, like literally pushed from within me, mm. like yeah. came out. You, you understand? Like it pushed. I can't explain it, but it, it pushed, mm. it came out and That's it sort of like choked of, me. Yes. You understand? Then I just started feeling, you know, sickly, a, a little bit dizzy. And I'm like, mm. you know what? I just can't do this. And I'm just feeling, I, I don't understand what's happening to me. Mm. But I leave that beer, which is strange because like, this is an oak that I drink and I drink like a fish and everyone knows. And I leave this mm. beer here and I, I can't just, you know, carry on anymore. I, I mm. go straight back home. 
because I'm thinking I'm just feeling sick. Maybe I'm coming yeah. up with something. I go into my mom had a, a back room. That's where I used to stay with my. Uh, now I've moved from obviously the small garage yes. because obviously it's a little uh, this year is a little bit yes. from from the that time. So I used to stay at the back with my older brother, and we are now staying in the back room there. And I get in there and I uh, sleep. Whew. And while I am trying to sleep, I don't know, man. Something just comes over me, and I just get up and I start, uh, uh, you know, reading the Bible. I open the Bible. I had one Bible in the room and I start reading this Bible. For some reason, I go to that portion that says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you shall be saved, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I, you know, it was just it was just supernatural. So I feel I want to give my life to Christ, but I don't know him. You know what I'm saying? I don't mm -hmm. have any basis, but I believe wait, what I'm like, reading. Even just you just, grabbing that Bible. That yeah. You were like out drinking, minding your own business. Yeah, yeah. And then now the alcohol is not cooperating not with <laughs> your body. And then you get home, you open a Bible. That yeah, on yeah. its own is like, okay. Hmm. That's true. And and, and, and so I, I open that verse and I read it and, and, and then I get, I get convicted. And this is me all by myself. There's mm. no pastor. Nobody's mm. preaching to mm. me. Yo. You know, and uh, I remember kneeling down next to my to my bed. And, and this has been sort of the basis of my Christian experience. Mm. Um, I like to be very honest with God, right? Uh, and I think it helps because no one is a superman. No one, no one is, we, we don't know it all, you yeah. know? And I knelt before uh, just on the side of my bed and I said to God, uh, you know, I, I, Jesus, I do not know you. I can't claim that I know you. I mean, I've, I've just read this, the scripture, but if it's true and you are true and you're real, I believe you and please become the Lord of my life. I literally sort of led myself through that that prayer Whoa. right Yo. okay fine and then um i am now to myself saved and um um maybe i know that we are a bit pressed for time but maybe the, the other thing that i maybe i would have wanted to touch on is that my brother at the time my older brother is now in sun city he's, he's been arrested so um drinking issues as well is he had gone drinking uh, a fight broke out in the pub mm -hmm. somebody got stepped over 21 times mm -hmm. the cops just found him there and this is somebody that literally i is my sibling i know him like i know yes. myself you would never let's say you would step you by mistake you would never poke you again a second yes. it's not possible you know like the way i know him you know, you know what i'm saying like yeah. some mm -hmm. random dude would have poked this guy 21 times and my, and my brother then because he was still in that space yes. just got carried and i say this to say a couple of years back, I did not know, unknown to me, my dad actually spent some time at Motherby and, she, and he had hidden it from the whole family. So I, I didn't sure. even know that my dad had actually, you know, done time. Mm, but well, these are some of those foundational, also. you know, issues. So yeah. you will see that uh, the trajectory of all the sons, we are sort of going the same direction. Mm, and around the same time, I was also getting in and out of the cells in Kempton Park. I would always fight. I would always be drinking. I would be caught up doing this and that. Mm. But mm. gradually, I was going that direction. Mm. So anyway... um. I tell my mom that, okay, look, I have given my life to Christ and uh, Sunday I'm going with you to church. Okay, great. We, we go, we get to church. <laughs> but I'm still a bit skeptical because um, to me, and I'm going to be honest with you, I had seen on TV people mm. manifest and, and, and all that. And it wasn't very new. It was quite new then, right? Because yeah. we're talking 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. sure. So it yeah. wasn't as as, as is now. As it is you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's common appearance now. now. It's everywhere now. Mm. But then... It wasn't there. Yeah. So um, we get there. <laughs> the man of God comes out. <laughs> he starts ministering. And this is now my father in the Lord, right? Uh, mm. I've been uh, serving under him for the past uh, uh, 15 years, right? Sure. Yeah, at this point. Because as I said, I got ordained in, uh, uh, when I was 27 for mm. nine years now as a pastor. But wow. following him from obviously the time that I got saved, about 15 years. Mm. So he comes out and um, a bishop in a Peter side, if, if you know him, he used to be a football analyst on uh, Soccer Africa. I'm sure if you guys like love soccer, you used to play for Morocco Swallows, etc. That is the man. So, so yeah, yeah, he's, he was yeah. obviously a soccer person, but obviously okay. um, he then became a, a minister of the gospel. So the bishop comes out. He's a pastor then. He's not a bishop then. Mm. But uh, he gets there and he starts ministering. And uh, my mom, now this time around, and I'm there. And it's, you know mm. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm witness. <laughs> my mom, the power of God hits my mom. My mom is rolling on the floor. My mom is actually, but this is my mom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you have <laughs> never I, seen this life yeah, before. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and obviously then it dawns to me that, you know, snap, this, this thing is really real. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. this is my mom. My mom doesn't have time for games. Mm. My mom is not going to come and start rolling, you know, on the floor. Mm. Oh, you know, I'm the spirit and that spirit and that whole story. 
So that that hits me quite quite you know quite a lot, and I'm like, mm. oh, so it means God is real. I think that was the first encounter, personal encounter mm. with the supernatural because I'd seen my mom, sure. somebody that I related to, mm. and just a backdrop again. My mom comes from a lineage where my great grandmother, um, she was uh, a Tswana descendant. She was from Botswana, mm. and my mom comes from the border of Botswana and Zimbabwe. Mm. And my great grandmother uh, apparently used to be what uh, they call Amakitelendi, and those uh, people used to uh, dance for the rain. Um, they would. Um, she, she had a pack of women apparently, as I hear from my mom, that mm. would, they would. Uh, be walking around together and when the time comes that they need the rain the community knew that these are the ladies they're the rainmakers mm. so oh, they'll go into the hut and they'll okay. dance and they'll beat the drum until and then until rains. it rains and because of that and because of the stature that uh, they sort of carried and the status that they had in society mm. um, everyone sort of feared them mm -hmm. and um, um, they, they were believed to have possessed this sort of powers, powers right? Yeah. and um, the thing that would happen in that community is that apparently it was taught to every household and every um, family that if mm -hmm. your children come across those ladies, you have to make sure that they run off. They can't look at them face to face, eye mm. to eye, eyeball Yo. to eyeball. And if it does happen that your child would see them eyeball to yeah. eyeball, they would carry the child with. And that would be the last that you see your child. And everyone mm. knew and no one would obviously approach them because they were sacred. Yeah. So they would yeah. take your child, go to a hut somewhere and they would kill the child. They would eat the child. I you know what yeah, yeah, that's what they would do. So it, it was... So for maybe for yeah. powers or something. Exactly. So, yeah, so it, it, they would and again, to sacrifice of they some They would sacrifice sort. the child. Yeah. And again, the community knows that you, these people are... Uh, are, are taken as sacred. So you, mm. there's a, an honor that comes with them. You can't look mm. at them in the mm. eyes and, mm. and that whole story, you fear them. Sure. So And and if they carry your child, that's it. You can't even go to the chief. You know that you it's, can't over. Go clean it's over. Bag. You know what I'm saying? It's part of the yeah, game. It's, it's just what Everyone it is. knows that these are the ladies, you know? So And, and my mom now, apparently, when we now got to now the deliverance, aspect, we realized that she was supposed to be, have been in line to carry that mantle from that kingdom of darkness you know what i'm saying because it's also always from yeah. generation mm -hmm. to generation mm -hmm. and uh, she was giving me a story very quickly or, or, or as well on the side mm -hmm. that one of the ladies um in the community then that was supposed to be initiated uh, and it will explain what my mom went through as mm -hmm. well that was supposed to be initiated decided that look um you know when we go to school and uh, times have changed and uh, this yeah. lady had gone to school she had uh, you know, learned science. She was now a nurse. And mm -hmm. Back in the day, nurses were almost equated to doctors amongst the black communities. And she had attained a certain level of, you know, status. And she thought to herself, like, you know, I, I don't have time for this uh, nonsense, this black, uh, you know, voodoo. So she went and <laughs> went to the town and she got a job as a nurse at a hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, it happened that the season came that they needed to go and dance for the rain. And she was supposed to be initiated in that season. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, as my mom tells me the story, they started obviously doing their thing, beating the drum, um, and because they used to watch as kids. Yeah. And uh, the the granny and uh, the pack of the women, they're going into this bush and they're going towards a river because I believe that was probably a river, you know, spirit or marine spirit mm. of sorts. Because now they had to go towards the river. Mm. That lady that was in town, apparently, what happened is that that spirit came up in her now, right? And she had this agency that she needs to get there. And, and, and now what happens is that she leaves her job and she's running just to get the, the nearest sort of bus that she can get just to get to that place. And um, she gets into that bus, bus and she, she, she obviously the bus gets there. And as my mother tells me the story, is, <laughs> it's insane. When she got to uh, obviously that community and she got off yes. the bus, she started running through the bush, right? And remember, this is a nurse and she's wearing white yes. clothes. And obviously, she's running through the bushes, uh, you know, thorns and all. She's she's almost like out of her mind. Mm. By the time that she got to the place where they were dancing and beating the drum, as God leaves, this is from my mom to, to my ears. Yeah. The lady was literally slithering like a snake on the pathway. Sure. She went all the way and her face, you see, like... Uh, anything that was makeup or any all the nice cute, yeah. uh, you know lipstick and all that it was her face was bloody she had it's, it's almost like you are you are literally sure. mopping the yes. ground of the person and she's like a snake and she's sliding into the water and 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 you you can see that these are serious deep african spirits mm -hmm. you understand they mm -hmm. don't take prisoners that's what the bible says of satan he's mm -hmm. the one that does not let his prisoners go mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so the same thing now was happening to my mom because mm -hmm. my mom was supposed to pick up Yay. that mantle so anyway uh we get home now we've come from church 
I'm now excited because I'm thinking to myself, then God is really real. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I've been struggling as a young man. Nothing has been coming right for me. If this God is real, and I remember going back and covenant with God and I contracted with him. I said, you know what? Mm. If you're really real, I will not waste your time. I always share the thing. And mm. I say, please, God, do not waste my time. I will mm. give you my life. I will give you my heart. I will give you my everything. Yeah. If, mm. if indeed what I saw is true, I'm, I'm sold out. Let's go. You know? So after, after that, the days that followed, I was very s- proper committed. I was, you know, almost every church service I was there. Mm. Started learning how to pray, learning all those things. And then every single morning, if I'm not mistaken, between three and five in the morning, that was me praying every single morning. Mm. I'm there. I'm there. Mm. I'm there. That is where now I, I had my own personal, uh, you know, supernatural encounters. Yes. So one of the days I finished praying, <laughs> I go back to bed because now I had... Um, uh, I had gotten a, 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 a sort of a permanent job, if I could call it. That. Mm. It was a, it was a blessing. It was a, because I was not, I didn't have any job, mm. and the man of God prayed for me then. So I got a job as a tra- truck driver assistant at one firm in uh, in Spartan, mm. and it was also supernatural the way that it happened. Mm. Uh, if I were time, I would have explained it. But but in any case, I'm I'm now uh, I finished uh, praying. Mm. I want to go back to rest a little bit so that I wake up and go to work. Yeah. You know, when I got to my bed and I, I would lay down a little bit and then uh, at around five, six, I would wake up, freshen up and then, you know, mm. go to work. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to lay down and I'm not a very deep sleeper. Naturally, I'm not a deep sleeper. Yeah, I, I used to have insomnia, you mm. know, earlier on in okay. life. Yeah, so so I'm, very, I'm very light in sleeping. Mm. Mm. So I've not fallen asleep <laughs> and uh, this spirit walks into the room eh. and I listen to your guys, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you know uh, yes. broadcast, broadcast yeah. and a lot of the things that people say here very consistent in terms of yeah. just saying I'm, I, I, I can't <laughs> explain how yeah. but at that point in time I knew that a spirit has walked into the room or somebody sure. has come into the room. Yes. I can't explain how I knew it yeah. and I knew exactly where they were. But the spirit was literally by the door and I knew sure. that a spirit just came in, it's by the door and sure. I'm fresh, I'm new into this thing. Yeah, hey, then I'm, I'm still learning how to pray. <laughs> I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know my left from my right. Yeah. But anyway, immediately that spirit comes into the room a split second, split second, which explains again that in the realm of the spirit there is no time there yeah. is no distance. There's no space and time is inconsequential. Exactly. There. <laughs> so shoo, it moves in, at the speed of light from there next so to here. my bed. So, you know, and you know it moved from the door. It's and here. I know now. That, that, that know. Is here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and now I'm panicking. I'm freaking out. <laughs> because I'm thinking about that. And I'm not. I'm not this is I'm not, not a dream. I'm not, this real. is not a dream. That, that is why I was trying yeah. to get to that. This is not a dream. Mm-hmm. This is not a vision. This is not. I mean, like I've, I know people will say, oh, I had a vision. My eyes were open. And this is what I saw. Mm. I am literally, I just finished praying and I'm trying to rest so that I wake up and go to work, you know? Mm. So now I'm freaking out and I, I want to now open my eyes <laughs> and, and I want to open my yeah. eyes. I want to see this thing. I want to get up. And this thing starts pressing me down and it's mm. like closing my eyes. So the first time I did not see anything, yeah. but that was the first time. And it's pressing me down. It's closing my eyes. I'm suffocating mm. and I do not know what to do. I'm freaking out, you know? And then for, by some way, the spirit of God just communicated to my spirit. Mm. At the time, I did not know. I would always say that something said to me. Mm. Yes. But the Holy Spirit mm. says Come to on. me, you know, mm. call out the name of Jesus. So I start calling out Jesus from my spirit. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I said, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The more I said it louder inside of me, boom, this thing just jumped out and just left me. Mm. That was mouth. That was the first, you know, sort of encounter. Sure. I carry on with my routine. I'm praying every day in the morning. Yeah. And, and obviously, back of that, the thing with me, I'm, I'm quite stubborn because now I've seen that. Yes. Now it tells me that there is something that I'm doing right because if, if I, I was not doing something right, I would not have had that, that, yeah. that, that kind of encounter. Mm. But what the enemy was trying to do, he was trying to freak me out. Maybe scare me. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe make me to, yeah. you know, let me stop this prayer thing as, as attracting, mm. you know, the wrong, mm. wrong kind of things. But I press on. Mm. Now the second time, I finish around the same time. It would happen around the same time. I can't mm. even explain how uh, the feeling actually happened uh, uh, this week, this past week, after uh, your Zed uh, Hello, after she yes, reached yeah. out to me, yes. the lady, after she reached out to me, and I, I knew that you guys had said, okay, you, I can come to the podcast. Yes. Yes. I literally had uh, 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 the next morning, I had that kind of feeling. Uh, not the demonic feeling, but yes. but the feeling that something supernatural is about to happen. So sure. so it would be like a tingling feeling that would go throughout yeah. my body. That's how it would start off, right? Mm. So um, the next time that that thing happens, 
boom, again, the spirits come into the room. Yo. But this time around, whoa, th- this time around, it was something else. Sure. So I saw, now now physically now, because mm. now I literally open my eyes and I look, yeah. I saw two spirits coming very quickly. I can't even explain it. It's speed of light. They're coming towards my face. Mm. But how I can describe them, it was like the scar of human beings. Mm. And these skulls were on fire. And, and you know when you have... Um, you have a, a fire, you have that uh, bluish, greenish flame. Yes. Mm. Uh, yeah, that kind of flame that is, yeah. you know, bluish, mm. greenish, mm. you know, yellowish. Mm. It's not like the red kind of flames. Yes. That you, they were like that. And they seemed to be on fire, those two skulls. They were literally <laughs> burning. And they come close to my face here. And they are, they are screaming at the loudest. I've never heard anything that loud. Sure. And now my younger brother is sleeping behind me. You know what I'm saying? He's sleeping behind me. I'm sleeping here, yeah, face this direction. And they are screaming like, ah. Like they're, they're all sort of exchanging these two faces. Mm. I'm freaking out because I'm thinking like, what is this? You know, and I, I don't understand what's happening. Mm. But then again, the same voice that sure. came the first time mm. tells me this time. He says, stretch your hand. You understand? I stretch my hand like this. Mm. I lie not as God leaves. I stretch my hand. Mm. I can't explain how because if I'm looking at my hand like this, I can see on this side of the hand, yes. right? But I don't, I can't explain it, but I saw this side of my hand. And on this side of my hand, fire came out. I did not say yeah. anything. I did not say any word. I did not pray. Yeah. Mm. Fire literally came out and consumed those two spirits. And they screamed yeah. and they just, boom, they left the room, you know? So later on in the day, I'm asking this all, I'm like, uh, you were sleeping in the, in the morning. Hey, it was a <laughs> and a like drama dude. was happening here. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, you, you see the noise that I had? And he's laughing. He's thinking like, what the heck? I'm like, dude, I've never had anything as loud. You know what I'm saying? These spirits were screaming and it was two skulls and it was <laughs> the on fire, you know? And that's when I realized that, okay, oh. even within that encounter, it seems <laughs> like uh, it was isolated to, to myself because I have somebody literally relying yes. on the same bed. Mm. He did not experience anything. So it was a you know. personal one. It was meant for you to yeah. experience. hundred percent. hundred percent. And I think God was obviously preparing, for, for preparing me for the days to come. Right, mm. because uh, I, I had not at that point. Obviously, I knew that we had gone to church, but I did not know the type of church, because the type of church that uh, we go to, obviously, maybe just going a little before, yeah. is is a very heavily, you know, uh, deliverance orientated oh, ministry. Okay. Although my my own gift primarily is teaching, I love okay. to teach a lot. Yeah. But because Word. I grew up and I was absorbed into a deliverance ministry, mm. deliverance is like, uh, you know, second it's, it's nature, nature, nature yes. for me. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. We can be eating now and we bring someone here that has a, a devil literally eating pop. I can get up and just lay my hands on them and they'll mm. manifest. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I don't uh, uh, sort of accredit it to myself mm. yes. because I also found it. Yes. You know you know what I'm saying? The man of yeah. God himself moved, um, he still moves, obviously exactly. mighty within that action yeah mm. tell yeah. me something so did your sure. mom get delivered from sure. the, the the gift of i don't want to call it the, what must i call it the, the call it, the it is. It's, ancestral it's demonic, uh, calling yeah, yeah, yeah. thing so did she eventually get delivered from that my mom eventually did get delivered okay. but um yeah it, uh, it took quite a lot because my mom almost lost her mind at a point she was mm. uh, admitted in psychi- psychiatric hospital sure. and that's why i was saying that uh, trying time to the lady mm. that uh, that spirit there to pull it that was a very deep spirit. Sure. Um, and and um, this is also a lesson to, to us as Christians. Um, the Bible says, do not make a novice a bishop, right? Mm. And the reason why I'm, I'm bringing up the scripture is because immediately after that, my mom was the only person at, at, at least that uh, she had even much more greater spiritual encounters than I was having. Mm. So you think that I, I was seeing some, some things, yeah. but my mom... Was on a, on a different sort yeah, of you know wavelength sure. altogether, because what happened with my mom is that that diabolic spirit then masqueraded as the Bible as this Bible says that yeah. Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Then all of a sudden, my mom that uh, we were just normal just last week, my mom all of a sudden is a prophetess. My mom can prophesy. My mom can do this and that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, and and it was by way of that spirit. That spirit is the one that was sponsoring that activity. Mm. And I say Ooh. this to say that it's not everywhere mm. where you Come see on. power mm. or where you see a manifestation mm. of mm. anything that, that is God. Come you know on. what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, a- anyone can access the realm of the spirit. 
any you, spirit can ex- we heard you know this just yeah. like no. the previous episode yes yeah exactly exactly anyone I mean, can access anyone can, anyone can yes. access the realm of the spirit the bible says by their fruits you shall know them that oh, is no. that is the basis of obviously wow. determining wow, is this a woman a man of god that i can follow yeah. you know what i'm saying it should not be because they they've done one thing i can stand up here lift up my hands the mm. power of god okay in the, my own instance the power of god but let's say by god forbid yes. some power strange power makes yes. somebody fall they roll down then all of a sudden mm. oh men of god and people are just it's, that's not the basis mm. that's not the basis you look at the fruits that do they exhibit the fruits of the spirit yeah. mm. you, you know what i'm saying are, yeah, are they power. are they somebody that is is to immersed be. in the spirit is yeah. this is this somebody that you can give your life to follow mm. you know it's not a small thing to 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 uh, trust somebody with your spiritual Come life on, no. you know but my mom uh, yeah she had her own journey i can't really mm. speak to it it's a very long story but she at a point she had lost her mind at a mm. point she was in a psychiatric uh, psychiatric hospital yeah. as i said she was sitting with the bible uh, this is how she sort of got delivered as well mm. um and and again uh, in conjunction with church yeah. but um sure yeah she was sitting with the Bible and mm. she would tell me that the patients there, <laughs> you know, and this is a place that keeps obviously people that are not mm. mentally right. The patients would come and they would pull the Bible you yes. know, away from her and she'd be crying, uh, you know, sister, please yeah. come and help me. You know, the yeah. patients are taking. And she says she read the Bible according to a cover to cover. I don't know how many times mm. she read this Bible until it literally Lived spoke her. to her. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and she says out of that experience, one of the days my uncle came to visit her and she told him straight up that, look, I'm fine. I'm, I'm okay. I need to be discharged. Speak to those people. And my uncle just speaking to her because he had engaged mm-hmm. her quite a lot. He grew up with her. He said, no, Sissy, you're so, so right, Muswe. And my mom is like, yeah, no, no, I'm fine. I'm telling you the truth. I'm fine. I'm not crazy. I know that it's, it's difficult to deal with the person that is in, a, yeah, in, a, in this yeah. kind of institution. And they're saying and they're fine. Everyone them. says they're yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm fine. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And he went and he spoke to the sisters and they assessed her and they said, okay, it seems like you're fine. Yeah. And that's how they sort of discharged her. Yeah. But she had gotten to that depth that, you know, yeah. it, it, was, it was insane. But uh, anyway, the, the, the next uh, sort of encounter that I have after that, uh, you know, those devils, demonic spirits mm-hmm. that came in. Um, um, I don't know if it was weeks or whatever it was, but mm. after that, I'm sleeping again after my four o'clock because now I was keeping a watch. Now I was yeah. now uh, I was on fire. Yeah. I was yeah, that yeah. Uh, young man that was on fire for Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm keeping my morning watch. I finish and I go go to sleep. Um, and immediately I lay down. And the funny thing is that I don't need, I don't even understand why. But this spirit would come before I would even doze off. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I think maybe by the doing of God, He also wanted me to see because. Uh, till today, that cemented my understanding of spirituality, okay. our Christianity. Yeah. Uh, you can lie to me about a lot of things, but you will not lie to me about the realm of the spirit. I know hmm. it exists. I know the demonic spirits. I know there is God. I know there is. I know whether whether you you can't take that away from me because it's a lived experience. Hmm. You know what hmm. I'm saying? So 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 the next time this uh, a devil comes into the room, and uh, this is the time that I had my own sort of personalized understanding of how we are spirit beings that reside in human bodies Mm. because the spirit came into the room and uh what it was trying to do uh according to me i could be wrong but it was trying to possess me uh that's Mm. what i made out of it that is what i could sort of make out of it Mm. and uh, uh it came in and it literally came straight to my chest right I can't explain it, but it came head on first and it was trying to press into my body, into mm. getting into the body. Mm-hmm. You head first. And have you ever Yo. seen how if you take a screwdriver or any other, uh, you know, sort of uh, instrument yeah. that is a bit heavier at the yes. back and, and sh- slightly, slightly pointed in front, yes. the, he- the weight is this side at the back. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And if you think of it, if you're doing this, then you're exerting pressure on whatever yes. you're putting on. I've never felt so much pain <laughs> in my chest. Sh- and, and now the funny thing is this. It was not the pain that I was feeling on my body Mm-mm. chest. No, 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 no. I'll be lying. I, I, I can't explain it, but I felt pain on my spirit man chest. So, eh. so because now this thing is trying to force into a container that I'm already existing in. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. You're trying to force into a container like that a I'm, I'm already there. You know, know what I'm saying? But why exactly. are you trying to come in? Trespass. But obviously, I did not even know that. <laughs> sure. I did not know that the spirit of mm. God was already indwelling in me. But, yes. but I suppose the Holy Spirit mm. wanted me to understand sometimes how... You know, people are sort of possessed. I don't know. But the spirit is trying to come in 
There is not enough space for both of us. Come hey. on. I'm already in there. But now you're, you're like, you're pressing against my chest. And this is not this chest. Mm. Me, my spirit man, is pressed against my back. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. Like, mm. I'm pressed against, because I can't come out of my own body. Mm. So no. I'm pressed against the shell, the back of this shell this that you see here. Mm. Yeah. And this thing is forcing to come in here. And I'm freaking out. <laughs> I'm thinking again, like, what is this? This is a different type mm. of, you know, sort of uh, uh, experience now. But then again, the Holy Spirit calms, him, calms me down. Mm. And um, 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 he, he, he co- tells me again to call the name of Jesus. And I call the name of the Christ. I call the name of the Christ and, until this thing jumps up and it leaves me, you know? Mm. So that was technically the last of the physical sort of uh, demonic manifestations that I yes. saw with my own eyes. Um, so, so then uh, the next uh, kind of uh, encounters that I then uh, encountered was that, and, and again, I was saying that uh, uh, very, it, it should be a caution, especially to a lot of people that yeah. experience this kind of, you know, or things. Mm, experiences. Um, um, spiritual experiences are good because they, they provide a platform to relate to the realm of the spirit. Mm-hmm. However, because we have already touched on previously that, look, um, there is a lot that happens in the realm of the spirit. It's, yes. it's not only, um, you know, uh, Holy Spirits. And by Holy Spirits, I'm, I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, uh, Holy Spirits can be angels. Uh, any other spirit mm. that is of God is but a Holy of Spirit. Of God, yes. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and there is the hierarchy, obviously, of the, of, of the demonic, uh, you know, mm. cater, mm-hmm. your principalities, powers, rulers, uh, rulers of darkness, of the age, spiritual weakness, and high places. All those are spirits that exist in the realm of the spirit. So why am I saying this? Um, after I experienced those those kind of experiences, what would then happen, you know, at a later stage is that I would be sort of wanting to sleep similarly as I would finish my prayer because mm-hmm. I would keep my morning watch and then I would go and rest a little bit. Mm-hmm. And now this is what would normally happen. I would, I would get down and um, while I'm trying to doze off, now this one I can't explain it really because it's a very tricky one, but uh, I would try as much as I can. So I would I would start hearing noises of people walking have you ever walked to Bree street um, if you are in south africa or in, you know mm. wherever you are a, a very place, busy place yeah. yes. in your city that's a very but busy mm. place where there's a lot of activity people are moving around they are talking yeah. that chit chatter and it's mm. a lot of steps moving all over mm. the shore so i would start hearing those kind of voices like people are talking they are moving everyone is busy here. it's like there's mm. a lot of traffic however the more i lose consciousness the clearer those voices sure. become. Mm. The mm. more I become mm. weak. And I'm not comfortable with it. So I shake mm. myself. Because remember, I'm not really sleeping. It's like I'm mm. dozing off. But I'm like, so I shake myself up so that I come back to consciousness. Because mm. you can and feel. I feel that I'm going away. The more you you are moving away. Yes. Exactly. I yes. feel that I'm going away. You try to fight so, it. So, I'm, yeah, I'm fighting it. And, and the reason why I'm fighting it is because I'm not comfortable with it. Mm. And, and again, I'm not getting peace in my spirit around mm. it. So it's not, it's not peaceful. That place it is, is not peaceful. not where you want to be. Exactly. Mm. Where is that place? I, I would I would lie to you. I'm not too sure. And and the reason why I'm saying so is because sure. a lot of people, once they start experiencing spiritual things, mm. then they get a craving and it's like, I want to keep on experiencing. More and, more. And, and again, remember the basis of your experience, the key to your experience, whatever secures experience is the Holy Ghost, right? Yeah. So so if, if in, in every encounter that I had, I was, I was scared. I would not lie. Yeah. I, was, I was fearful. But every single time I would get peace when the Spirit of God comes and yes. reveals so it. It feels different. It's, it's different. No. If, if, even when, 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 look at anyone that had an encounter with an angel in the Bible. When Mary and Gabriel appeared to Mary, it said, mm-hmm. it said peace, woman. It said, fear not, for yeah. you are a woman that has been chosen. It said, fear not, again, fear to not. Daniel. Any, any time you see an angel coming before a human being, he knows that naturally you'd be scared. But fear is not of the Lord. Even when yeah. Jesus Christ came walking on water, he said, peace, be still. He, he said, it is me, fear not. So, mm. so God he knows that spiritual en- encounters are not uh, normal for us in it our realm. But, but he always says, peace. I live with you. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Come on. It is only on that basis that so you can so trust your experience. That there's a grace for you to understand the spiritual things. Exactly. For you yeah. to have a supernatural encounter, especially mm. with the things of God, there's a yeah, special yeah. grace that God gives you and it's called peace. A- exactly. If, if, if you're losing your peace and again, the spirit of God is not there. <laughs> it's a very dangerous ground that you're playing on. Because that's why sure. some, a lot of people get exposed to, I've seen people that have fasted, crying out for the power of God, that have, lost their minds i've mm. i've seen people uh, mm. over over the years in ministry mm. that we have kept in church for elongated times of deliverance uh, there were two twins uh, young boys mm. that were involved in rap and all that that got involved in the illuminati etc and all that mm. but i say this to say that not every spiritual encounter is of the lord Ooh, you you can ascend into the realm of the spirit mm. and get manipulated mm. to, just like my mom that then became um you know 
uh, somebody that sure. was now a prophet wow. of sorts until she got properly delivered. And, yeah. and to tell you something, my mom's prophecies were very accurate. They were 100%. Because even after I, I God supernaturally de delivered me from drinking, uh, I backslid as far as smoking because I used mm. to smoke as well. Mm. And one day I walked into the house and she said to me, you, you've been smoking. <laughs> and, and you know what I'm saying? And I didn't know what to do. And so she called me into a room. followed because it was true. But yeah. just knowing that just because not it's true God. does not what mean that it's exactly. not coming God. from the right channel. Spot on. We're going to come Spot back on. for Yay. part two. <laughs> we have to because wow. that mm. is not his entire experience. Yeah. We, we, there are other experiences. That was just the spiritual aspect of it. Yeah. But he also had physical, natural encounters that are supernatural. Yeah. Do you understand? And Pastor Judge is going to come back for that. That was incredible. I hope you enjoyed sure. that episode. Like, I mean, and especially when you describe like the spiritual encounters, you can literally feel, feel it. Oh, oh like, yeah, when you describe, like, sure. The spirit walks into the room, you feel it. Oh yeah. Do you no, know what I, I mean? 100%. And, uh, are you guys feeling it? Please comment down below. Did y'all get the same feeling? I'm like, geez, you know, like, yeah. um, but thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you guys more than you can ever know. Um, those likes, those comments, those super thanks, those shares, everything. We see it. We appreciate it. And may God continue to bless you. The more you watch, the more we keep coming, the more we <laughs> keep coming. But definitely with this one, I know you guys are going to want to part two, but I mean, I'm the first one to comment and say part two, please. Thanks. It's coming because we want to hear it all. Thank you, Pastor Judge. Thank you so much, everyone, Thank for watching. So Remember to follow, like, subscribe, and uh, also share it with someone who you know needs to hear this yeah. one. From myself, Innocent, and myself, Millicent, and our awesome team right there at the back. You and might not see or hear them. Pastor Judge is bye for now. now.